So we'll do a Q&A. This one's about IV meth addiction and what the long-term effects are. So I'm going to break it down with long-term effects and short-term effects. Um, with long-term, your main concerns are going to be things like infectious complications. So when you're using a needle, you open the door to getting infectious uh, viral hepatitis, um, HIV, and then, of course, things like um, widespread lung abscesses, which can become septic and kill the patient. I've had that before. And also something endocarditis, which is basically an infection and inflammation of the heart valve. So my biggest concern is actually short-term use because methamphetamine causes a cardiac toxicity, which means as the level of the drug rises in the bloodstream, it can actually cause the heart to go into a fatal arrhythmia. So in other words, the heart goes into a ventricular fibrillation, and most of the IV meth autopsies I do are from a sudden cardiac death. All right, let's do another Q&A. Um, this person has asked why we make a V-shaped um, incision and not straight across. So in short, when we do the autopsy, we start um, the incision here at the shoulder and go to the middle of the chest, another incision here to the middle of the chest, and then down the abdomen. We actually call that a Y-shaped incision. Now, I also want to say... Um, Folks from other countries have told me that they do the T-shaped incision, where they go straight across and down. But in the United States, most of us do the Y-shaped incision, and that is because when you have the Y, or the top, which was the V, you actually dissect that flap back up so that you can see the neck all the way to the mandible. And that's important because then we can look at the carotid vessels, and we can take the larynx out and look at the thyroid. So for those of you who do a T-shaped incision, please let me know how you get the neck structures out because I think that would be very difficult. This technique also allows for uh, the person to be shown at a funeral without any evidence of a cut. All right, we are on a Q&A tear this morning. So this person asked if I've ever not wanted to do an autopsy because it made me feel uncomfortable. There are a lot of difficult autopsies that we see, um, particularly ones involving children, um, ones involving um, any tragic accident, anything involving abuse. However, I've never really been emotionally affected by such things. Um, when I'm there, I am functioning as the unbiased intermediary to uh, retrieve all the evidence necessary to potentially uh, go to court and for justice to be served. And in some ways, this is why forensics isn't for everyone, because if you can't do that, it's gonna be hard for you to do the job. Now, more to your point, if I were asked to do an autopsy on someone I knew, yes, that would make me uncomfortable and I would likely refer that case to a colleague. All right, one final Q&A for today, and I'm gonna to post something really cool later today or maybe tomorrow, or maybe the day after, it depends on my work schedule. This question is about um, diagnosing mental illnesses. So um, illnesses such as schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorder, um, any of these, they're not really diagnosed anatomically. They're diagnosed clinically. Now, if we want to get specific, some of these conditions um, have changes which can be diagnosed with certain types of functional MRI. But in terms of autopsy, I do not cut a brain and say, aha, this person had schizophrenia. When I'm Considering diagnosis of mental illness, I am usually relying on the medical records that I review for each case or sometimes an oral history from the family. So it would be unusual or impossible to diagnose uh, mental illness purely at autopsy, although there can be physical signs that suggest it, and all of those still have to be taken within the context of the case.